Okay, now at this point, I hope you went through and saw the Xcode and the Expo command line tool. Um, hopefully that wasn't too boring to wait a few hours to download Xcode. I know it's a pain, but we do it once and then we're good. Uh, so now we're going to get started with our actual Expo application. And just moving forward, I'm going to use Expo and React Native interchangeably because they basically are the same thing. Uh, you're still working with React Native when using Expo, but Expo just adds a few more features. So I'm going to try and differentiate when uh, we're using Expo specific features. Uh, any, every other time, it's just always going to be just React Native. Um, and you, you'll be able to see that by when we import items. Uh, like we did in our app.js file, we're importing logo from dot slash logo svg, um, and then the first one we do import React and then component from React. So you'll be able to tell the difference. You'll be importing things from React Native most of the time, and then sometimes specifically Expo. Um, and those are just things built by the Expo team or improved upon by the Expo team. Um, but now, if we get started with React Native and go back to the documentation, and we scroll down, we can see this very basic build native apps using JavaScript and React. So this is a component that would it would look like in React Native. And the reason why I started with just building out a React web application is because you can see the similarities. We're importing React and component from React. Import React component from React. Uh, and then this is where we go import text and view from React Native. And so we, this, is, this is where it differs a little bit. Um, we still have the same classes. This class is named Hello React Native and extends component. This class is called app and extends component. And they both have a render and a return, a render and return. And you can just call, if you really want to, you can have the same func functions, add minus component did now in the state in this React Native component. So all the functionality is basically the same. The difference is when you get to native uh, functionality like the camera, location, accelerometer, uh, those types of things that aren't available in web and are specific to iOS and Android, and then the components themselves. So instead of using div and p-tag and button tag, we have React Native specific components. So see how we created this component of the header and we have the first level capitalized, whereas like div is lowercase, p is lowercase. So this is a custom component. So just like we created our, our custom header component, React Native has their own custom view components and their custom text components. So instead of having a div here, you would import view, and instead of switching back and forth, I'm gonna make it wider. Uh, we're gonna have the view in the text, and then we're going to import that, and instead of div, we're going to have a view, and then instead of having p tag, we're going to have a text tag. And actually, the if we import button, it would still be button, um, just with a capital B instead. And instead of on click, it would be on press. So there's a ton of similarities. Some of the naming is a little bit different, uh, but you'll get used to that uh, as we move forward. Um, but I really wanted to show you the similarities between a web application and iOS and Android. And it's, it's, it's like the, the website says, you have to learn once and you apply that to all three platforms. You're not going to be able to copy a ton of code directly from web to uh, React uh, the way we have this set up, but we can code it so that uh, we can leverage uh, technologies like Redux. So if anything you build in Redux, all the functionality and state um, you could copy and paste that 100% directly from web to uh, native iOS or native Android, and it would work just fine. Um, so that's how we're going to structure out moving forward instead of this state, uh, this component level state. So like I said, I hope you have uh, the Expo command line tool installed and Xcode installed because that's what we need to get moving forward. So we're just going to clear make sure it's clear what we're working on. So this is my code folder. So if we go to Expo to get started, we're going to do up and running. And all you need to do is Expo init. So that's why we need the command line tool. We're going to do Expo init Instagram. So that's the name we're going to call our application Instagram. 
And so it'll give you a few uh, options. We're gonna create our own tabs. So I don't wanna, I wanna make it pretty clear of how everything's built. So we're just gonna start from scratch. And then we're gonna use Yarn to install everything. You could, like I said before, you could use Yarn or NPM. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I would just stay consistent if you use Yarn to install. Just use Yarn for everything else throughout the application. Or else you're going to have a yarn.lock file and a package.json.lock file. Um, so just keep it consistent. It technically won't break anything. Um, probably, but just to be sure. So now we're going to do CD Instagram for the app we just created and we're going to do yarn start. So I'm just going to close down our old application. So when we do yarn start it automatically uploads this localhost 1902, 19,002 um, and this is basically our, our terminal kind of in the browser. Um, you could also use the terminal itself. And if we scroll back up, we did yarn start, and it runs a few commands. So I suppose dev tools, opening dev tools, and it creates this QR code. So this part is really cool. This QR code and this QR code are the same. So this is where if you download the Expo app in the App Store, whether it's Android or iOS, just search Expo X E X P O and that will ask you to sign up. Um, once we do the command line tool, once you install that, it'll ask you to sign up as well. And once you log in with that same account through the command line tool and the application itself, it will know what you're working with. So if you go to the, the Expo app, I can't show you right now because I'm actually filming on my iPhone app, which I didn't realize was kind of a pain. But if you go to the Expo app, you gotta believe me, and you'll see the local host running. So you could either, if it doesn't show it's running, you could either just click on that or take a picture of this QR code and it will actually run the app. And what I mean by that is if you did the simulator, it'll look exactly like you would in a simulator. So if we scroll down, since I don't have the app, I'm going to do um, I for the iOS simulator. You could do the Android emulator as well. Um, and this is why we need Xcode. So this simulator is from Xcode itself, which is why we need to download that 10 gig, 12 gig, however big it is now, thing of Xcode to use Expo itself. But the awesome thing is that, uh, oh, we have, a, we have an error. This version of Expo is out of date, uninstall the app and run again to upgrade. Okay, now it's working. So maybe that's a good thing. What had happened was it said my app was out of date. So not the code itself of Expo. That needs to be updated every once in a while too. Um, but what it meant was I had used Expo in the past in this simulator specifically, and that app needed to be updated, which is the first time I saw that actually. So all I had to do was like, just like you would go to your phone and go to the home page and then delete the app itself. like. Uh, hold down and then click the X button and just go to the App Store and install it again. Um, that's basically what I just did uh, and now it works. Um, so maybe that's a good thing that happened. So if that happens to you, usually the yellow warning signs won't break it, but apparently this time it did. Anyway, now we have the app running and we have some commands. If we do Command D, it'll show this uh, screen again and we could actually do debug.js and so we can debug it just like we would our regular web page. And so we show our app. It's just got to reload again so that JS is debugging now. And it says open up app.js to start working in your app. And so just to show you, there's all the yellow warning signs. This one specifically is just warning you that it may be a little slower because we're debugging JS. That's not a big deal. Um, there is a way to turn those off, but I usually don't like to because usually if you get a warning, there's something you could do to fix it and that you should fix it. Uh, and so 
Right now, I'm just going to leave it there. But for now, we're going to open up our code. And it looks similar to our other application. So we have we still have an app.js file where have a class of app that extends react.component. Um, so it's a little bit different, but I'll show you how you change that in a second. And so as a render return, and we have our view that we're importing from React Native and our text that we're importing from React Native and our style sheet. So our styles are going to be a little bit different. As you can see, it just looks like an object. So this container has an object of flex. And see the syntax is a little bit different than just uh, plain CSS. Um, but you could basically use all the same styles. The difference is this background color was dash color. And instead, we're using camel case. So React Native and Expo use camel case for everything uh, instead of dashes. So in, in regular CSS, it would be align dash items for flex box. Um, instead, it's camel case of capital I and everything together. So a few small things, which may be a little confusing at first, but it'll get used to it. Um, and then I had the issue of updating the app on the simulator itself, but you also might run across a warning of the SDK version. So this is what kind of updates quite a bit. Um, and the SDK version is just expose SDK which is anytime React Native has an upgraded build, the Expo team will go uh, about creating a new SDK, which they go through and make sure all the modules are still working after they update the core React Native. So like I said, it's a clear indication of it's still React Native, but an abstracted layer so that right now we don't have to have Xcode open. We don't have Xcode open at all. We just have this simulator itself. Um, so that removes a few obstacles in getting ready to uh, start coding. And then this is Babel. I wouldn't worry about this. This is Expo specific. Uh, we have our package JSON file, just like we did in a web application. And we're importing Expo, React, and React Native. So there's not a ton here right now. And we're going to start adding a few things as we go. We still have the node module folder, but we're not going to do anything with. And then the assets folder, which is just the icon and the, the splash screen. Uh, so this is um, app-specific folder images. We could add any type of images in there, but that's the only thing that's in there right now. So pretty bare bones right now. Um, and then, as you can see, we have export default. So instead of doing the way we had it before is export default app. So that's just another way of writing it. Um, and then if we do I think the way we had it before was importing component like this and if we just remove react so this will still work so there's a lot of different ways to do different syntax in JavaScript which is a little confusing sometimes but it also lends itself to flexibility uh, in different ways that you'd like. Um, and so I just want to make clear that it's kind of all the same. And in the next video, I'm actually going to transfer everything we did in the React web application to Expo itself to show you that they're kind of all the same stuff and how the life cycle of an Expo app is a little bit different than React, but it's basically the same. Um, and so hope you join me. See ya.